Hello folks, welcome back. Pastor Bob from Place of Refuge. Today the title I have is, The Time Will Come, and then in parentheses I said, Is It Here? Think about that, Is It Here? as we go through. And I'll be in 2 Timothy, chapter 4, verses 1 through 8 to start with. And I got some side scriptures as we go along, and as always, I'll look to my computer. So welcome, and God bless. I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of evangelists, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. And then verse 8, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that also love his appearing. So welcome. This is a real powerful, that's why when I say the time will come, is it here? It's a question mark. I think most of you know we're kind of living in some of these times. So the word charge, what's that mean? He testified, it means earnestly, to solemnly affirm, to exhort earnestly, all right? Therefore, before God, he's really trying to drive this point home. Now, of course, he's talking to Timothy, a young man. However, this is the word of God, so this is for us as well, amen? Who shall judge the quick? Okay, the judge here, I mean, not none of us, I mean, we're all going to be judged, but not for our sin. You and I, if you're born again, your sins are forgiven, what will he judge us for? Well, what with what he give us? You know, what do we do? Do we win people to Christ? Do we have a ministry? Whatever it is, you know. You know, if you don't know what you need to do, then ask God and he'll show you what to do. Amen? Well, he said he will judge. He'll pick it out and he'll pronounce judgment in a forensic sense. Forensic is something that is scrutinized really <laughs> uh, very strongly, all right? So he's going to scrutinize because he's keeping record. He knows he doesn't keep record of wrong, but he's going to reward us for our obedience, okay? So a forensic sense, you know, like there's a lot of people right now that are upset about the election. They want a forensic, or a forensic you know, um, deal through the whole thing, forensic sense if you will. And uh, and that would scrutinize what was going on, how the vote went on. So that's kind of going on in our nation right now. And then it says he will judge what? The quick and the dead. The quick here, those are the simply among the living. Those are not dead. That's simple enough. And then the dead. Now those are one that have breathed or last and dead. Now that'd be obvious. Both those words might be obvious. However, this one here also means spiritually dead. You know, when will this happen? When will he do this at his appearing? All right, what's that? For the second and future appearance of the Lord. And this will be a glorious time for us Christians. Not so for the people that don't believe in God. Amen. So today's the day of salvation. And if you have family members or friends, and maybe you've been, you know, a little lax in telling them about Jesus, now's the time to do it because time is getting short. And his kingdom, at the appearing in his kingdom. That's the royal power of Jesus, the triumphant Messiah, which he is, praise God. His royal power, his kingship, his dominion, and rule. That's his kingdom. Now here's a charge. Preach the word, the incident in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. All right? What's the word preach mean? Well, that's to be a herald. You know, you herald something to officiate as a herald. To proclaim and announce publicly. Announce what? It's the gospel. Amen? With its all of its attendant privileges and obligations. See, we get privileges. Eventually we'll get rewarded. But there's obligations that you and I need to fulfill. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, it's interesting. This, this word here, if, if you're older, in fact, most of the people nowadays may not remember that. Some of the older people might. But we're all getting old, myself included. But it means to preach, it means it's a word in the Greek called Caruso. There used to be a great Caruso, a guy who was quite a crooner. And 
and speaker, you know. And so I thought that was kind of interesting. And that's what that word means. Okay, so we're, we're supposed to be instant and in season and out of season. All right, let's define that. Instant means you're standing by. You're present. Here it means to be at hand. So all of them describe for us to be what? Really so be available always. All right, in season means when opportunity occurs seasonably but then when it says out of season it means unseasonable what does that mean we are to preach god's word both when we believe that is appropriate and to do so when it is inconvenient listen i'll share a story with you i had uh, our church member come to me and ask they had a dear friend that was a friend of the family for many many years older man and was a veteran from years ago and they asked me if I would come, and he was ready to, he wanted to know about God, and he wanted to accept the Lord as Lord and Savior. Well, this was in, um, it was on a Sunday. Or no, excuse me, it was midweek. And I said, okay, when? You know, I was thinking maybe we'll go Sunday after church. And they said, well, he's pretty sick. And I said, okay, we'll go now. And I did. And I led him to the Lord, and not too, just a few hours later, he died. So, a lot of times, things like that will crop up where people need to hear it. You're going to just have to lay down what you do and go do it. And God will bless you for it. And that's when it's inconvenient sometimes. You know, you might even have a birthday party. I can't tell you how many that things happen to me or my wife. You know? So here's some things that he wants us to do. What? Reprove. Now, when you do this, before I get into this, and I'll reiterate this with some scripture. Make sure when you reprove and do anything for God to somebody that you do it with wisdom, love, and meekness. Amen? All right, so let's move on. Reprove means by conviction to bring to the light. Now, they're going to bring it to the light, to expose and correct. Find fault. Now, when I say that, that's what it said in the Greek, find fault. It doesn't mean we need to be a fault finder. You can find fault. Okay, we got to talk about something. To show whoever it is to be wrong. Look. Okay, this is not good for you. And here's, here's what it says in Proverbs 27, 6. It's not the most popular thing to do, but may I submit the scripture. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy, or yes, are deceitful. The kisses of the enemy are deceitful. How, did Je how was Jesus betrayed? By a kiss. You know, we can sh blow sunshine in their face all the time. Oh, you're this and that. Folks, listen. You may have to tell them, and it may hurt a little bit, but you want to tell them the truth. Now, here's a scripture to tell us how to do it. And I would encourage you to exercise this, what it says in Galatians 6.1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of what? Meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. All right. So, how many people are in this equation? Galatians 6, 1. There's two. There's the spiritual one and the one that needs restoration. So when you go to something, you're spiritual. Make sure that you do it in the spirit of meekness. And may I submit to you that a lot of times, how would you want to be treated if you were in error? That's what it means when it says, lest thou also be tempted. In other words, a shoe could be on the other foot. Maybe it's you and me that somebody's got to come to. Amen? How would we want to be restored? With meekness and love. Amen? So, and it says to rebuke. Now, that means to admonish strongly or charge sharply. So it's pretty strong. And again, I would caution that you make sure you're not too harsh, you know, and don't appear self-righteous. They may think you are, but even if you try not to, they may appear it, so you just have to weigh that out. But use wisdom and don't appear self-righteous, all right? Like, how would I use this? This is very simple. Let's just say I'm talking to somebody that, about God, and he's going to be gone or she's going to be gone. I'll never see him again. And yet, maybe they did a lot of talking and I didn't have a chance to interact or interject Jesus Christ. I might have to be quick about it and stern, but loving. You know, and just say, look, look, I've got to go. But I definitely want to, I care for you. You need to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's your problem. You know, and then maybe you'll separate. You may not see him again. So use wisdom, and I, I'm sure probably most of you have been in that circumstance sometime. And if not, I would encourage you to do it that way or something like it. It says to exhort. 
What's that mean? To admonish. It means to entreat and beseech and encourage and instruct and teach. You know, there. when you get on uh, YouTube, I play guitar. A lot of times I want to get on YouTube and see some um, real articulate guitar players and some of the things that they're doing. So I get on YouTube sometimes and watch a, a tutorial. So that's, you know, when they teach, they're loving, they try to show you, they slow it down and stuff, and they don't look, you know, they're, they're not acting cocky, like, hey, if you don't get this, you're no good. No. And so we want to do that. And see when it says with all, we want to be kind and stuff, when it says with all long suffering. Now listen to this word. I've come to love this word. Patience. That's the first one. Most Christians, if you've been a Christian for a long time, how many of you have you ever prayed for patience and things got worse? I didn't, it didn't, I didn't catch it right away. And I'm thinking, thanks, God. I go, Lord, look, I'm praying for patience and nothing's working out. You know, this is early walk in my, you know, early walk with God. And then it clicked. I didn't get it right away. And I'm thinking, so people say, don't pray for patience. Well, we need it. You know, but this again, it, and it means to have endurance and steadfastness. Now, this is the one of the Greek interpretation that I love about this word long suffering. And here it is. Slowness in avenging wrong. Okay, you may have the right, you may want to, but make sure you're slow in avenging wrongs. In other words, he wants us to be patient and endure and steadfast and do it and beseech and encourage. That's what it said about exhort, exhortation. Amen. Now, how do we do that? Use the word of God, my friends, with all long suffering and doctrine. That's to teach and instructing. It says tutoring. That's why I used that tutorial earlier. If any of you have ever been kind, or excuse me, if any of you have ever had been uh, not kind or compassionate, it just throws people off. But you need to be kind and compassionate, patient, if you will, because if you don't, you're going to alienate those people that you're trying to teach. Okay? Again, I know people can be hard, but still, you know, be wise, godly. You'll do much more than teach. If you do it by example and stuff, they'll remember you. All right? We used to have a, a, a home for women years ago. We had to shut it down because we had some difficulties. But it was all God, and it worked out well. It did, you know, we didn't, you know, we weren't perfect and everything, but we worked really hard. But my wife, you know, this, we shut it down in 2017. My wife had the opportunity, was called by one of these girls here not too long ago. So here it is in 2022. And they wanted to talk to my wife. And you know what she said? She said, you never condemned me. You always tried to encourage me. That blessed my wife. Because, you know, I had to be the disciplinarian in something. If we had to, I might have had to ask him to leave or something. And then we gave him second chance. It was a long story. But she said, you know, that you never condemned me. You always encouraged me. So that's how you want to be. And again, we I did tell him. But it, just, it was another story. But anyway, verse 3. The time will come. Now, this is the problem that we live in today, my friends. For the time will come when they, they, people, will not endure what? Sound doctrine. But after their own lust, shall they what? Heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. All right. If you've been a Christian a while, you've probably heard this. But you know what? Endure means to bear, hold up, to bear patiently. Have patience in regard to what? Sound doctrine. The word sound means Christians whose opinions are free from any mixture of error. Amen? And one who keeps the, the graces and is strong. Now, that's important. One who keeps the graces. A lot of, you know, there's a lot going on now with grace. And they're, they're applying it incorrectly. Yes, you, grace covers everything. But it's not a license. You can't do things that you want to do. And, and if it's sin and call it the grace of God, that's not how it works. So we got to hold the graces and our liberties at check. Amen. All things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. All right. Now, the doctrine is, again, that's the teaching, instruction, precepts, and doctrine. Now, here it stresses the act of teaching and literally means that which belongs to the teacher. All right. What word are we talking about? We're talking about God's word. So who really is the teacher? It's the Lord and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let me read that again. It stresses the act of the teaching and literally means that which belongs to the teacher. Okay? So that said, you and I, if we use God's word and only God's word, that's what belongs to the teacher. I don't use my opinions. Opinions are worthless, my friends, but God's word has power. 
Amen? And when you say it, it changes the atmosphere. Now, if you want to compliment what it says in the world, okay, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about don't substitute what you think is right opposed for what God is right. He's always right. The word is always right. Amen? God's spoken word. That is true doctrine. All right. But after their own lust. Now, here's the problem. This is what we're living in today. Their own desires, their own cravings, their own longings. And you know what it means to have lust? Now, this is 1939. Look it up in the Strong's. If you get on Blue Bible uh, letter on the Internet or something, look up lust under the Strong's, and this is what it'll say. It'll say their own desires, their own cravings, their own longings. Okay? It says this. Desire for what is forbidden. Now think about that. The desire for what is forbidden. Go back to Adam and Eve. It started in the beginning. They could eat of anything in the garden, but this one tree, they couldn't. They were enticed, they fell, and that's why we all have this sinful nature in our hearts. Amen? We have that DNA. Amen? You never have to teach a child. I mentioned this a few uh, times ago. You never have to teach a child how to lie. It comes natural. Why? Because the same DNA, that rebellious spirit from Adam and Eve, we inherited. That's why we need to save it. But they shall heap to themselves. The one, and when you do this, when you're looking for your own lust, what's going to happen? They shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Now, you know you know how it, you ever get it. Like, you know, I play guitar, and so if I lead worship or something like that, my nose starts, <laughs> you know, it's hard, and then you move your nose and stuff. And you're thinking to yourself, man, if I just had a second just to drop off this thing and itch, and then it seems it gets worse. You know how it is. It just needs to be scratched. Itching means make to itch, tickle, to scratch. Desires of hearing something pleasant. Desires of hearing something pleasant. Amen? Pastor, tell me good things. I don't want to hear I have to change. I don't want to hear that I, ha I should be doing things that I shouldn't do. No, nobody does. You need to hear it. You know, I did in my early walk. I'm glad that people told me the truth. They'll have itching ears. What's that? Simple. That's the organ of hearsay. But notice what it said. An organ of hearing, excuse me. But it says hearsay, report, or rumor. That's what's going to happen. You know, people want to hear pleasurable things. And it's good to hear pleasurable things. But when it comes to God's word... It's like I mentioned before, our faithful of the wounds, you know, a faithful of the wounds, your friend? Yes. But, the, you know, the kisses of the enemy are deceitful. Your friends will tell you the truth. God is telling you the truth. And so they want to hear, tell us pleasant things, Pastor. Don't tell us unpleasant things. I wish I could all the time, but we're living in a time where the gospel is not being preached the way it should. Some churches are compromising God's word. You can't do that. We're losing power, and none of us want to get involved. Why? Because it's hard. Yes, it is hard. But who? just think if our forefathers didn't stand up for what is right. We need to do this. Amen? So there's a lot of churches today, and people will you know, crop into all those places that tell them that they don't have to take up their cross and follow God. They can do anything they want. There's a lot of stuff going on today with Christians that should not be doing it. Amen? And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. That's the truth. And shall be turned unto fables. All right? Let's do a couple things before. Turn away. That's obviously turn oneself away. But it means deserting, too. That's scary. Deserting. You know, here's some of other interpretations used in the word, uh, in this word in the Strong's, of putting, putting a sword back in its sheath. Now, I want you to think about What is this slang word that we use? For the word of God. Sword. So they'll turn away. It's like putting the sword back in the sheath. And get this. Of Judas returning money to the temple. Now isn't that scary? That's exactly what a turn away. Turn their ears away from truth. What is truth? What's appertaining to God and the duties of man? Moral and religious truth as personal excellence. It means the word of God and everything has anything to do with Christianity. And they shall be turned, amen, unto what? Fables. Amen? Listen to this one. They shall be turned unto fables. A fiction, a fable, here it is, an invention, a falsehood. Now this Greek word, 
You know, this Greek word is where we get the word mythology. Now think about that. Mythology, really? That's what it, it's called, muthos. But it's spelled M-Y-T-H-O-S. It looks like mythos. Okay, but it is pronounced muthos. Okay? And, and that means that's where we get the Greek word mythology. Is that what we want to believe in? No. Verse 5. But watch thou in all things, endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of that ministry. Now watch, it means that we need to be sober, my friend, to be calm and collected in spirit, to be temperate, dispassionate, which means passionate, it's a dis different word, circumspect, to be sober-minded, what? And then we got to endure afflictions. Listen, in America, I think we're in the beginning stages of persecution, whether it's going to go full circle, we'll see. But to, it means to suffer and to endure evils and hardship. Suffering ill to endure and sustain affliction. Folks, if you're a Christian and you're really going to walk, you're going to have problems. But God does deliver us of them all. doesn't mean that everything's going to work out perfect. You know, you might have some cantankerous people around you, but eventually it does work out. But don't give up. You know, it's like the, you know, when the seed falls in the soil. We want to do the 160-30, you know, the 30-60-100. That's what we want. I want to be in that hundred realm, amen? And here it is, the work of evangelists. What? What's an evangelist? It's one that brings us of good tidings, heralds and salvation through what? Through Christ, you know, who are not apostle. It said who are not apostle. It's a preacher of the gospel. It's you and I, amen? You don't have to be an apostle. You don't have to be a pastor to be the work of an evangelist. To tell people about Jesus Christ. Make full proof of that ministry. And again, this is a charge to Timothy. Make full proof means thoroughly and accomplished. Give full assurance. How? By fulfilling and to the utmost of all of its duties. Make, and it says, bent on, make sure you're bent on doing exactly what God wants you to do. And paraphrasing that. Of what? Thy ministry. Those who are by the command of God who proclaim and promote what? Christianity among men. That's what it is. Tell people about Jesus Christ. Amen? Verse 6 says there, now Paul, we're talking about Paul now. He says, for I am now ready to be offered. And this time of my departure is at hand. All right, now Paul knew his time on earth was drawing to a close. How he, you know, there was people that speculated a little bit that maybe he already been condemned and not the sentence, you know, given out. I don't know. But uh, it, he was not going to be around too much longer. So I'm ready to be offered. Now that's kind of a drink offering. It's believed like figurative. It's used of those uh, whose blood was uh, poured out in a violent death for the cause of God, which is exactly what happened to our apostles. All right? Then he says this, and this is what we all need to say someday, brothers and sisters. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. you got to keep the faith. I have fought. What's that? To contend and struggle with difficulties and danger. Listen, we're in a time right now that Christianity is not very popular. Popular. We're the laughing stock of the world. But does that mean we got to quit? No. In other words, we got to pick up a cross and follow him. Amen. It means to endeavor with strenuous zeal. To endeavor with strenuous zeal to strive to obtain something. To contend for victory in public games. See, figuratively is a task of faith and preserving amid temptation and opposition. Now, Paul always used the Greek games. You know, there was a lot of that stuff going. I fought a good fight. Paul used these metaphors to contend in victory like public games. Listen, if you've ever been in anything, weightlifting, boxing, track, whatever it is, you know, look at the gymnastics and the you know, Olympics and how much time they have to put into that. It's strenuous that they have to contend to try to be into that gold and silver and bronze. Amen? They won't even get near it if they don't. And then there's the ones that reach it to that pinnacle, that, that gold. It's amazing, these athletes. Amen? Well, that's what it's kind of talking about. I have finished my course. Someday you and I are going to give an account. Someday we're going to die. Can we say I finished the course? That means I finished the life of office of ministry. I've kept the faith. I've kept the conviction of faith. I was one who God could rely on. Is, can God rely on you to share the gospel? I hope he can. I have been faithful is what it means. Amen. So here's what happened. Now this is a great thing. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at the day. And get this, here's where you and I come in. And not only to me only, 
but to all them also that what? Love his appearing. Now the word crown here, you know, when you put a crown on, it's, it's a mark of royalty in general. That's what it is. It's an exalted rank, if you will. The external blessedness with, will be given as a prize. To who? The genuine servants of God. In Christ, the crown of the wreath, which is the reward of righteousness. So notice this. It's not to me only, okay, but unto all of them that love his appearing. Now, let me make that personal. And not to me only, but to all you who are listening to this podcast and what you do beyond this. Amen? The church that I pastor is place of refuge. So I say, and me only, not to all the people of the place of refuge as well. And that's how it is. You people out there in podcast land, or you too? You too. But what we have to do is love his appearing. All right? Now that word love, my friends, is a word called agapeo. Now that is the same word used in for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Okay? So let me interpret that. It means to you're fond of, you're welcome. You're indicating a direction of the will. And finding one's joy in something or someone. In this case, it involves both something and someone. Who's What's the something? It's his appearing. Okay? And the second, what is it there? The next one is obviously who's the person? It's Jesus Christ. Amen? I love that. Be welcome, be fond of, be pleased, indicating the direction of the will and finding one's joy in something or someone. And the something is his appearing. And the someone is Jesus Christ. When he comes back, glory to God. Amen? Let me give you a couple of scriptures here. Revelation 1, 7. Behold, he cometh with the clouds, and every eye shall see him. Every eye, my friends, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail. Why? Because of him even so. Amen. Which pierced him. My Greek word study, it means to be, now get this, it means to sting, stab, prick, and pierce. So it's interesting, as I was writing this down, I was thinking as I was writing this down, the inter- one of the interpretations of this uh, word pierce was stab. Amen? Really stood out to me. And so I thought, the thought come to me, when we will not listen to the word of God or apply it, we're just kind of like stabbing. Amen? We're just stabbing. No, I don't want to do that. I'm stabbing. No, we can't be. I know that's a metaphor, but think about that. It means to stab. You know, we, we don't want to pierce him by not doing what we should be doing. A couple more scriptures, and we'll close. And these are in Revelation as well, both in the same chapter. I'll use verse 20, and then I'll back up a little bit. This is Revelation 22, 20. He which testify these things saith, Surely I come quickly. And then it says this, I like this. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. Revelation 22, 12. And behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me. For what? To give to every man according to his work shall be. Amen? Listen, God is so fair. I want you to think about this. He's so fair that our life here will determine how we live the next life. Amen? As I mentioned here a few weeks ago, on the crux of the matter, you know, we're either going to go to heaven or we're going to go to hell. And that's where we're going to spend eternity. Amen? So I'm hoping this minister to you. So let's pray. Father, I pray that, Father, we are in these times right now, and it's accelerating. I ask that you bless these people. I pray and decree, like always, no weapon formed or fashioned against them will prosper. Let them heed this message as much as I need to heed this message. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, folks. I'll see you next week. Lord bless you.